Hi guys, uh, <coughs> I've been asked to uh, demonstrate a method of painting Blood Angels. I've got a random base coat of marine from my collection, and I'm going to de demonstrate a method of painting Blood Angels. Only this one's going to be uh, slightly different. This is called uh, progressive dry brushing. What you do is you get yourself your your chosen paint. Um, I'm going with Army Painters Dragon Red as a base. I'm going to be highlighting and dry brushing it up with pure red. <sighs> Washing it with red tone and using Army Painters uh, Soft Tone to uh, <sighs> add some shadow and some shading later. I may, depending on how well it works, throw in some Mephisto on red, but I haven't actually decided on that yet. So, first you put some of your Dragon Red paint on your uh, palette, and you get some on your brush, take a bit of excess off. Take more excess off on uh, tissue, tissue paper or paper, um, something like that. I use the back of my hand because I'm lazy and a uh, slob. And you just start dry brushing it over. For the base coat, I tend to use a nice big brush like this. Um, obviously, I'm not going to dry brush uh, the gun, but I'm going to dry brush near the gun just to get everywhere. Um, I tend This is the base coat, so it doesn't matter what direction you dry brush in. Um, you're trying to get it everywhere for this coat. Don't worry if it goes on too thick for this coat. You're going to be dry brushing a lot over it. <clears throat> this is a bit of an odd method of doing it, but it's one that was very popular when I was learning to paint in the mid-90s, early noughties. <clears throat> to early 90s. I say when I was learning to paint, I was learning to do weird stuff. Make sure you get up into all the into all the crevices and all the parts. You can see I've <sighs> so totally got distracted there. <laughs> You'll find some areas that are easier to get into others. That's why you want a couple of different dry brushes. To do most of it, I've got this big one, but to get into the crevices, I've got this one here. These are the finest quality dry brushes that Wilkinson's had available. But it lets me get into these areas here.
as you paint it, you, you, you'll find that it should uh, dry up pretty quickly. That's the joy of dry brushing. So you can just continue to start, you can just continue to work the colour up brighter with more and more layers. You can see now that some of the parts are actually starting to look a decent uh, blood angel red, or rather a decent red rather than, oops, sorry, not it there, rather than black. Uh, one point, dry brushing with a, uh, with a camera can be tricky because you knock the camera. <sighs> but the cool thing about this is it puts in your shadowing, your shades, your colors, all on the same level. You don't have to worry about a lot of it for a long time. Right. It's getting to about the level at this point where more levels of dry brushing aren't going to make it uh, too much lighter. But you can see here, <sighs> already I've got a cool effect with lots of shadowing, lots of work in there. It appears a little darker on camera, but that's not really a problem. Next, I'm going to take <sighs> a lighter red. I don't worry about it going too bright. You can see that if I hold the bases up, you can see that this red is distinctly brighter and lighter as well as a little more orange. <laughs> Sorry, twitching there. As well as a little more orangey shade on it. I'm gonna again uh, stick this onto my palette in the same way. Just there, and I'm just gonna, again, load my brush up in the same way, just a bit of paint. You just need a tiny bit of paint on the brush because when you do this, it's gonna spread out. Again, on the back of my lovely hand. You can see my hands actually looking quite decent. Sometimes you'll overload the brush, like I've just done there. Easy thing to do if you do that is get a cleaner brush and just go back over it and the clean brush or the uh, dry clean brush will lift a lot of the paint off. Uh, it's easier to do, you're flicking back and forth so often. And you can see it's getting a lot brighter. Oh, sorry. Just taking that thing. You can see it's getting a lot brighter already and starting to look much more like a blood angel. <clears throat> Again, you're going to lather this colour over, but in a dry brush manner. You're covering most of the colour underneath, <clears throat> except for a little bit. But the point of putting the colour underneath is it gives this brighter colour, another colour to work off of, and it still maintains shadow.
опять. Chair, you, go to the and you see here you're getting a nice color it's a little darker than <coughs> you want a dark angel to be at the moment but that's okay it's going to get darkened down and brightened up for the uh, before the base coat is over this takes a while, um, so I am going to do the whole thing, but uh, feel free to fast forward through the video to the uh, wash phase. Actually, I'll say that, I'm literally about to start the wash phase now. Where are we? Nope, that's soft tone, I want red tone. Right, with the red tone, you want... Again, a nice thick brush like like this one. You see, this one's a little worn. It doesn't matter. It's also the uh, brush that came off of Warhammer Conquest, <coughs> but it's a nice thick brush, so it's uh, perfect for the uh, washing. That uh, trilling noise you in the background is my son. If you want to do it quicker, which is what I'm doing, I tend to use a brush like this. Just because um, it's a sign, it's a time-saving uh, method. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to be washing, but I'm not going to be completely overloading it. So I'm going to take a bit of the uh, wash like this, make sure it's uh, pulled up a bit at the end there, and then I'm just going to go over the entire the entire model, letting it pull up where it wants to. and letting it uh, wash off where it doesn't. <coughs> <coughs> now, you can see already that, uh, sorry, I'm just getting a bit more. Nope, that's chaotic red. I didn't want to pick that one up. That was in case I needed something else. Where are we? Where did I put that soft tone? Oh, what did I, ah, here we are. Red tone even, sorry, soft tone. You can see that the red tone is actually already bringing the colour around from a slightly rusty colour that you've got into a more Blood Angel red colour. Um, I love the Blood Angel red, which, um, yeah, because it's a, it's a great colour. <coughs> but I also do like kind of a, a visceral red colour as well, which is one of the reasons I do it this way, because it leaves it in a slightly more brutal looking colour the worst of Blood Angels would work perfectly well for World Eaters um, with this colour. I'm probably going to use the Mephiston Red later to try and um, round it out. Um, if you're wondering why I chose these colours, it's because I really like Dragon Red. Um, I think it's a great colour. I really like Pure Red. I think it's a great colour. And um, I've been itching to give them a go. And primarily, they're the colours I had, so I didn't actually have to go out and buy anything. Um, as much as uh, I'm always going to try and, if somebody wants me to do something, I'm always going to try and do it. <sighs> I'm not going to spend too much money on it. Because I've got three kids and therefore I don't have too much money. You can see there that it's uh, it's beautiful and glisteny. <laughs> looking very like something that's covered in blood. Um, the problem now is all I can do is leave uh, is um, wait and leave it to dry. So I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to come back when it's dry, and I'm going to show you the next bit, okay? Hi guys, I'm back. As you can see, uh, the uh, wash has uh, dried, and I've got my nice uh, kind of red-looking guy, so I'm just going to bring him in. You can also see he's a bit orange for a blood angel. So what I'm going to do is 
continue the dry brushing, which I would have done anyway, but instead of using the pure red to bring him up, I'm going to start with some of this Mephiston red, which is why I had it in out in the first place. <coughs> and I'm going to use that one, <coughs> just using this brush to uh, load it up. <coughs> if you're wondering where I got this funky palette, it's what the um, screen protector for my mobile phone comes in. And the reason I use these is because I've got three kids and one of them is a three year old and if I'm halfway between I can just close it, the fudge up and keep the paint from going everywhere. <coughs> Sorry. You may notice I've taken another dry brush. <sighs> That's just for expediency's sake. Um, the dry brush I was using, I've got soaking because that's how you get them to last longer. But you could easily just let it dry and do another one. Yeah, you know, if you were doing dozens of them, you do the first coat, let it dry, and then come back the next day and do the rest. Now, with this top coat, I'm also going to be adding some shadowing to it. And the way I'm doing that is by coating in downward strokes rather, rather than what I was initially doing, which was up and down strokes. <coughs> this time I'm doing a circular downward motion. <coughs> what this is going to do is it's going to... Obviously, I'm using a, a richer looking red, so it's going to help change the colour to something I think is a little more dark, uh, Blood Angel-ish. I wonder how many times I said Dark Angels and Blood Angels in this video. <coughs> and... <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> sorry. Having some Zorex twitches there, I'm not um, By doing it downwards, it's obviously it's reaching the colour, but it's leaving some of the darker shadows that I created with the wash on the underside, which um, <coughs> help with the um, with the basic shadowing of the model. And that's one of the things about this, it puts all the shadow, this technique puts all the colour and the raised parts and the shadows in as you're doing it, so you don't have to then go and do too much shading before and after. So it's actually a, a kind of easy but cheaty technique. Right. Worth noting, sometimes you'll see me doing it like this, sometimes you'll see me doing it like this. When I do it like this, it covers I get more paint on the model. I don't know if you can see that. But when I do it like this, it hits the raised areas and misses a lot of other stuff, which gives me more, uh, as you can see, round here, round the neck, it's making it stand out more. I'm doing some other areas. Just making sure I get into the areas that I want to have some uh, <coughs> redness on them. Now some of the areas, like this area here, it's underneath, so I don't want too much redness, but I do want to try and catch those. Uh, I do want to try and catch the top areas, like, you know, the rim over the knee pad and the knee pad itself. So I will be doing, I am doing that, as you can see. And there already you can see it's given it a much richer shade of red. And that is, uh, <coughs> that's basically uh, <coughs> the base coat done. <coughs> now, first thing I tend to do after this point <coughs> is look at anywhere that I think is a little too bright and I want to dull down. So this is where you're getting out your more normal paint brushes. Uh, in this case, I'm using a synthetic uh, two paintbrush. 
This is just a random German, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> a random German synthetic paintbrush. And you might ask why I'm using a soft tone <coughs> instead of the red. And I am in fact going to take some of the red and mix it in. But I'm using the soft tone because shadows also mute colour as well as just uh, darkening it. So I kind of feel that the soft tone gives a nicer shade to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the soft tone and a bit of water, just water it down a bit. The reason I'm watering it down a bit <coughs> is because I want it to flow more easily without leaving obvious um, areas where I put it. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it under the kneecap here. Oop. And you can see there it's already giving a shadow. I'm just going to run it up here under the leg and just into that crevice there and the same here. And I'm just going to do the same here, the same here. Basically any area you think would have a little more shadow than the rest. I'm going to take a slightly finer paintbrush and uh, just run it under here. So you can see uh, the downward dry brushing is giving me a bright edge here and I'm counteracting that making it look even brighter by uh, putting some uh, shadow under it, which is where the shadow would naturally fall. You can also see that a lot of this is already done. What I'm doing now is slightly smoothing it out and just making it a little crisper, or in some cases, a little smoother. In other cases, I think, you know, where they're raised areas like the crotch, the dry brush has caught it, but I want the light to be coming down from the top. So I'm just following following the shade, following where the dry brush has effectively led me. You'll also see me doing my fingernail very gently. If I put too much wash on, or if the wash has gone where I don't want it to do, I'm just wiping it off with my finger there. Also, one thing the wash does is add color. You'll see certain areas are darker, they're blacker. The wash actually helps add some color in there to make sure they don't look too black, because the last thing you want is just a black and red contrast. Now, you look at this model, <sighs> right now, and you can see there's a lot of contrast areas, but it's not so bad, and it won't look anywhere near as contrasting, oh, let's wipe that down, when all the other bits are painted. And you can see that I'm just taking some of the areas that I want to look a little darker and just taking this paint and loosely like the bottom here I want it to be a little darker I am probably going to run uh, a light edge right along the edge to so shining but to give it a more three-dimensional effect I just want these bits of the bottom to be a little darker the way I'm uh, thinking of the light now is just generally coming down from the top you can do single point lighting you can do multi-point lighting anything you want but for me I just tend to have it nice and coming down from the top because it's nice and simple. And again, I'm just taking some of the excess off there. Worth remembering with Blood Angels, you haven't got one of the um, fixes that you get with standard Marines, which is you're not going to paint these edges here, because most of the Blood Angels uh, that I've seen, and I did look them up before I did this, don't have a different paint, sc uh, different paint scheme along the edge of their armour. So this bit here, it's going to help give some colour, and this bit here. Also, I'm painting along here just to give a bit more crispness in there. Again, I'm just bringing it under here. And in, as I say, it's doing a lot of things, but primarily what it's doing is adding colour where I want colour and dimming it down where I want to dim it down. Um, as I say, it's worth noting, once you paint some of the details in, it is going to change how it looks. So don't worry if it looks a bit too turned now. Once you, for example, once I put the um, silvering and black in there it's going to change it and it's going to look um, a little different a little more uh, realistic so all these bits are going to go together and sometimes you you just kind of have to have faith that you're doing the technique right and it's going to work at the end and if it doesn't that's no biggie it really it really isn't um, you're going to paint hundreds of models some of them are going to look fantastic some of them are going to look awful the main thing is to enjoy yourself in doing all of them Come here, focus. There you go. Sorry, guys, camera got a bit out. Got a bit out of focus there while I'm moving the model around. And one thing I'm doing also, I'm taking the paint, 
I'm starting in the dark areas here and then I'm working my way outwards. So I'm starting in the dark area and that way it'll pull up in the areas that are already dark and um, help transition, help smooth out some of those transitions and then you feather it out. Just going to go for the crotch again. <clears throat> because I've worn this paint down, I might need to do it a couple of times, um, but that's perfectly normal, perfectly acceptable. There's no problem if it doesn't look right the first time. You can darken it down, or if you if you want to, you can line it up. Sometimes you want a little bit more contrast because the contrast, whilst it's going to be visible here, where you look at the model, most of the time when you play with the model, I'm just going to pick up the thing of this, it's out here. So in in many cases, you want the contrast to be seen from a distance um, because most models are going to be... There. Most models are going to be based on um, what looks good on the tabletop rather than what looks good uh, close up. This whole um, this whole dry brushing method is really a tabletop method rather than, for example, a Golden Demon method. You know, I wouldn't necessarily bring one of these to Golden Demon, but if I was painting an army, um, you can dry brush a ton of models very quickly and uh, get away with it. Sorry, just switching there between the two and the one. For some of the finer areas and some of the finer detail there. For example, I want to pick out some of this pouching. I want to make sure that it looks darker on the bottom. And, you know, the shade can be used for more things. By painting it under the pouch here, you, you're going to be able to see that a little better at a distance. And by, yeah, as you, you, can, you can already see when I paint the first time, it's a little darker underneath. Whereas, oh, that's power on one of my things, but don't worry, not the, not the device I'm recording on. It's already begun to a um, give it a little shadow and b show um, show the difference in those areas and feather out some of those where perhaps the contrast either isn't there enough or even if it's there too much. It's the beautiful thing about this stuff. Uh, a lot of my friends refer to it as skill in a bowl, or at least Ben does. Um, <clears throat> these washes will do a lot of the work for you. And look really good. Um, do 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 do. And just um, again, I'm feathering, feathering that out there so that it, uh, so that it uh, blends. <clears throat> and as I say, that's one of the reasons why watering the washes down is uh, very effective, <sighs> because it allows it to it allows it to blend a little more. And again, you start in the start. I was starting the area on darkest, and then feather outwards from that. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I think he's good enough for now. I may go back later, and um, sorry, I'm just going to bring him in close. <clears throat> I may go back later and do more <clears throat> once I've started adding the details. <clears throat> uh, another random point: it's perfectly normal when. Moving on to the next stage of the model to see a bit that you missed. It's fine to go back. Don't worry about it. Nothing's set in stone. If you really want, you can strip the whole model down and start again. But there you can see I've got a nice base coat with some base highlighting and some base some base washes there um, from the uh, progressive dry brushing technique. Next week, I'm going to go on to details. And after I've done details, I'm going to do some of the um, specific point highlighting, like the you know, the little red lines that are going along here and things like that. I'm going to add stuff like the, um, obviously, the aquila and all the details there. Um, mostly because this video has taken quite a long time and I don't want to do it forever. I hope that's um, been useful. I hope, particularly hope it's been useful to the person who requested it. Um, I would mention you by name, but I am rubbish at names and I have literally forgotten it since I last looked it up, which was at the beginning of this video. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you found it useful. Uh, tune in next week when I'm going to start adding detail to this baby. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, remember to like and subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. I'm not sure why, but I am. Um, so if you like it, see me there. And uh, please tell your friends. Thanks very much. Bye.